Good morning and welcome to this service of the International Christian Fellowship for Now. It's my privilege to start things off this morning, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us and we trust this hour of praise and worship will be pleasing to God and will be a blessing to each one of us. Please join with me now in a short prayer to start our service. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we've gathered together to offer you our praise and our worship and to learn more of you. We begin by acknowledging that you are the one true God who has created and who sustains the whole physical universe and who reveals to us your perfect love in so many ways. We are compelled to ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for the harm that we are doing to your wonderful creation and to each other. We behave as if it is all provided exclusively for this current generation, with no thought for the needs of those that follow. Have mercy on us, Lord, and save us from the inevitable consequence of our collective greed. We thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you set before us, for our redemption through your Son, for your amazing creation, for your constant presence with us, for meeting all our needs, and for the love of those around us. We pray for the wider world, Lord. There are many areas of conflict and we feel helpless. Lord, we ask you to make yourself known to the leaders of every land so that they do your will and not their own. And help each one of us, Lord, to act in a way that brings about the changes in the world order and in our local community that you so desire. We pray now, Lord, for those known personally to us who need your presence in a special way at this time. We pray for any who are confronting problems of physical or mental health, money, relationships, bereavement, work, study or uncertainty. We hold up before you especially those members and friends who have particular needs at this time. We pray for your comfort for John Rhodes and his family as they mourn the loss of Jill. We thank you, Lord, that she is at rest and that we have one more thing to look forward to when our time comes. We pray for Pam Jolly, that her ankle might soon be healed and she can leave hospital. We ask you, Lord, if it accords with your perfect will, that Jerome's bid for a scholarship for his studies might be successful. We pray for all those of our online congregation, that they might grow closer to you through this medium and feel your presence despite the distance that divides us. And finally, Lord, guide each one of us to know how to meet the needs of those around us as we are able in your name and with your guidance. Amen. Zach, the tax man. This is Zacchaeus, big Zach of Jericho, a little man with a big heart. You might think he always has been generous, but he hasn't. This is Zach's story. Let's go back to the start. 
Here is Zach's old class photo. Can you find Zach? Yeah, that's him, down the front. Zach didn't like school much. At lunchtime, he was never picked to play basketball. I'll have Dangerous Dave, Agile Aiden, and Incredible Iona. Yeah, and we'll have Jumpin' Josh, and Airtime Ash, and Leaping Luke. You can have Zach. Nah, <laughs> you can have him. Zach, you can be the scorer. But worst of all, and I know this would never happen at your school, kids used to tease Zach. They would point at him and sing, Snort E, snort E, Zacchaeus, here's a sure E. And then they'd laugh a lot and think that they were very, very funny. This made Zach sad. Then he got mad. And then he decided to get even. Zach came up with a brilliant plan. <laughs> Evil snicker. <laughs> because Zach was always scorer, he became very good at maths. He said to the other kids, let me do your homework for you. And for weeks, Zach did everybody's homework until no one could do it for themselves. And then he started charging them 10 cents for every sum. Soon Zach had lots of money. No one liked him, but Zach didn't care. And that is the story of Zach at school. When Zacchaeus grew up, he was good with numbers. So good that he became a tax collector. His job was to collect money from all the people in Jericho and send it to the king. Zach still wanted to get even with everyone who had teased him at school. So he collected a little bit extra. One dollar for the king. Two dollars for me. One dollar for the king. Five dollars for me, one dollar for the king, ten dollars for me, <laughs> evil snicker. <laughs> one day, Jesus came to Jericho. Zach was so excited, he joined the crowd waiting for Jesus. He couldn't see. He tried jumping. But he hadn't played enough basketball at school, so he couldn't jump high enough to see Jesus. He tried pushing, but no one liked Zach, so they wouldn't let him in. So he climbed up a tree, and people pointed at Zach and sang, Snore E, snore E, Zacchaeus is a sure E. And then Jesus came closer and closer, and stopped right under Zach and looked up and said, Oi! Zach, hurry on down. I want to stay at your place today. Zach no longer felt sad. He didn't even feel mad or want to get even. Zach was happy. No one had ever picked him before. Everyone else was angry. What did Jesus pick shorty, snorty, greedy Zach for? They grumbled. Zach said to Jesus, I'll give half of my money to people who are poor, and to everyone I cheated, I'll give back four times as much as I took. Zach belongs to God's family, Jesus told the people. Hooray, said everyone. I've got a brilliant plan, said Zach. Let's all go back to my place for lunch.
good morning. Shall we pray? Loving Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for the community in which we live, for our family, our neighbours and our friends, for our church and for the loving warmth and concern of that community. Help us confess those things that took us away this week from the things of your kingdom that didn't reflect your great love for us and all creation or showed the image of God to others. Let's give thanks for the times we have followed the way of Christ, showing acts of kindness, mercy and compassion to those around us. In a world of change, we're grateful for your changelessness. In a world of doubt, we're grateful for your hope. In a world of darkness, we acknowledge your light. In a world of compromise, we know we have your word. In a world of haste, we're grateful for your calm. In a world of noise, we thank you for your peace. Teach us, God, to treasure the differences that distinguish one person from another. Fill us with the strength to overcome senseless fear and hatred. Open our hearts to the radiance that shines forth from every human soul. Help us to shed our apathy and remind us that it's our obligation to be responsible for one another. Help us hear the cries of all who are in need of our assistance. Give us the courage to combat prejudice and intolerance wherever they exist. Teach us to see each other through your eyes, all equally loved and all equally precious. Thank you for today, for eyes to see the sky, for ears to hear the birds, for feet to walk among the trees, for hands to pick the flowers from the earth, for a sense of smell to breathe in the sweet perfume of nature, for a mind to think about and appreciate the magic of every day, for a spirit to swell the joy at your mighty presence everywhere. And now I'd like to share with you this version of the Lord's Prayer from New Zealand. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all. Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In all times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. Amen.
Good morning. The reading this morning is from Luke 19, 1 to 10, in the message. <clears throat> then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name was Zacchaeus, the head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see it over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there, a little stunned. He stammered apologetically. Master, I give away half my income to the poor. If I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Jesus said, today is salvation day in this home. Here he is Zacchaeus, son of Abram, for the son of man came to find and restore the lost. The word of the Lord. Spirit, teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart.
Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us again for our worship service from the ICF in Portimao. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open his word together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together in this way. And thank you, Lord, most of all that you are here with us. We are in your presence. And Lord, I pray that you would quieten our minds now as we hear from you. Speak to us, we pray, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, of all the stories in Luke's Gospel, the one we're going to look at today is one of the most colourful and one of the most memorable. It tells of the remarkable change in one man's life when he met Jesus. Last week, we saw how Jesus entered Jericho on his way to the Passover feast in Jerusalem. And as he walked, scores of pilgrims joined him on the road and onlookers watched and listened as he taught the moving crowd. A major event has just happened in Jericho with the healing of blind Bartimaeus. And this has had a snowball effect on the crowd. Not only has Bartimaeus joined the procession, but so have many other townspeople who are excitedly telling others about what they have just seen and heard. They don't want to miss out on any more miracles. Jericho was a wealthy city. Uh, it was the winter residence of Herod the Great and his descendants. It was situated on a fertile plain near the Jordan Rift Valley and it was irrigated by natural springs, making it a pleasant oasis in the Judean desert. It became famous for its palm trees, its balsam groves, and its gardens of roses, which perfumed the air. The Romans took dates and balsam from Jericho to the rest of the known world, and many traders passed this way, doing business in the prosperous city. The Romans had a significant presence here, uh, not only with Herod's residence, but also with many other important buildings which they had erected. Because of the great wealth of Jericho and all the trade that was conducted here, it also became an important centre for taxation. We might think we pay a lot of taxes here in Portugal, uh, but the Romans thought of everything. There was a poll tax which was levied just for the privilege of existing. A ground tax which demanded 10% of all grain and 20% of all wine and oil. And an income tax which took away 1% of a person's income. There was a purchase tax on certain articles as well as import and export duties. There was a tax for using the roads, the harbours, the markets and a tax even had to be paid on a cart and on every wheel and on the animal which pulled it. Well, at least here in Portugal, we're not yet paying a tax on every wheel of our cars, so we can be thankful for that. Now, the common practice among tax collectors was to collect not just what the Romans demanded, but also to add on a significant amount to line their own pockets. The Romans didn't mind as long as they got their share. So tax collectors were regarded by the Jews as thieves who were in league with the Romans, who didn't just hand over their hard-earned money to their enemies, but added insult to injury by stealing even more for themselves. At the very top of the ladder of all the tax collectors in Jericho, was a hated little man by the name of Zacchaeus. His name meant righteous one. Oh, but he was considered far from righteous in the eyes of all the Jews who lived there. He was on a par with Herod, another traitor who called himself a Jew, but acted like a Roman. Well, on this memorable day when Jesus passed through Jericho, there was such a huge, excited crowd of jubilant people that Zacchaeus was curious. Whatever was going on? Who were all these people following? Where were they going? What was he missing? And as Zacchaeus paused to listen from a distance, he heard people talking about Jesus of Nazareth. 
and he wanted to see for himself. He tried to stand up on tiptoe, but he was much too short to see over people's heads. He didn't dare push his way through the crowd because he might have been trampled to death. And there was no point in politely asking people to let him through because they all despised him and wouldn't want to help him. And then Zacchaeus had a brainwave. He wasn't just curious, but he was also creative. He found a way to squeeze round the outside of the throng and run ahead to a perfect vantage point. A sycamore fig tree with a short trunk and wide, low-lying branches. Gathering the folds of his robe together, he climbed up into the tree, forgetting his dignity, and found a reasonably comfortable branch to sit on, hoping that no one would notice him up there. Well, a few minutes later, he heard excited voices growing louder and louder and looked down to watch the crowd approach. Since they were all intent on what Jesus was saying and looking at him, Zacchaeus hoped that he would remain safely hidden among the leaves and clusters of figs. But just then, he heard someone call his name. Zacchaeus! He looked down in surprise, only to realise that Jesus had stopped right under his tree and was looking up at him. Come on down, Jesus called. I want to come to your house today. Zacchaeus couldn't believe his ears. Someone wanted to come to his house. He had no friends, so no one ever came to his house. Zacchaeus quickly scrambled down the trunk and led the way home, opening the door widely for Jesus and his disciples to come in. They had a wonderful time together eating, drinking and talking about God and the wonderful life that he wants to give us. Well, by the end of the meal, Zacchaeus was a changed man. He stood up and declared his intention to Jesus. Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. A radiant smile stretched across the face of Jesus as he exclaimed, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Wow, what a transformation took place in the life of Zacchaeus when Jesus came to town. We can see this transformation on several levels. First, there was a transformation in the way Zacchaeus behaved. He went from being arrogant to being childlike. Zacchaeus was the most important of all the tax collectors in Jericho. He had been in this business his whole life and gradually worked his way up the ladder to a place of prestige whereby all the other tax collectors looked up to him and had to report to him. He was proud of his position and all the money that it brought him. Not that it made him happy, but at least he had a good job and could hold his head up high. Usually Zacchaeus was content to sit in his fine robes in his tax office behind a wooden desk, talking to unhappy customers as they reluctantly came in. Zacchaeus would always keep a stern face, and he never smiled. His job was simply to tell people how much they owed, and to insist that they paid it in full. If they didn't have enough money, he would offer to lend them funds, at high interest rates, of course. And although they complained bitterly, it worked well for him because he could make extra money that way. Sometimes he would go out into the streets of Jericho and stop tradesmen as they passed through. He would instruct them to unload everything from their carts, and then he had to find as many things as he could to tax them on. He had an important job and was proud of his accomplishments and his earnings. No one liked him, of course. No one was ever happy at what he told them. No one ever smiled at him, and he never smiled at them. 
But when Jesus came to Jericho, we see a real change in the way that Zacchaeus behaved. Now, it's quite possible that he had heard the surprising news that a colleague of his, a fellow tax collector by the name of Matthew, up in the province of Galilee, had left his lucrative job in Capernaum to become a follower of Jesus. Why would anyone do that? Zacchaeus wondered. So when Jesus came to town, Zacchaeus was curious to know more. He wanted to know what Jesus was like. What sort of a person was he? What did he teach? And why would anyone give up a well-paying tax collecting job to become the penniless follower of a poor preacher? There was no money in that. Zacchaeus was curious. He was also eager. When he realised that he couldn't see over the crowd, he didn't give up. In fact, he became like a little boy again, running on ahead of the people and climbing up a tree to get the best view of Jesus. He was also spontaneous. When Jesus said he wanted to come and stay at his house for the day, Zacchaeus didn't hesitate but quickly came scrambling down the tree again and welcomed him to his home. Not just Jesus, but almost certainly his 12 disciples as well. Now that's a lot of unexpected guests, but Zacchaeus didn't mind. Curious, eager, spontaneous, Zacchaeus showed a lot of characteristics of children. And that's a good thing, because Jesus taught in Matthew 18, 2-4, I tell you the truth, Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Well, Zacchaeus certainly humbled himself. Once proud, arrogant and self-sufficient, he left it all behind in his quest to find Jesus. And secondly, we see a transformation in the way that Zacchaeus felt. He went from feeling rejected to feeling accepted. One of the most beautiful things about this story is the way that Zacchaeus is accepted by Jesus, even before the little man says a word. Here is a person who, for most of his life, has known only rejection and hatred because of his association with the Romans. He wasn't allowed to enter the synagogue to attend worship. He had no friends. He was an enemy of the people. But Jesus took the time and trouble to stop and talk to him, to call him by name, even though he was hard to reach, hidden away up in a tree. From the moment he saw him, Jesus treated Zacchaeus with dignity and respect. He saw him as a person of worth. He called him by name and took a genuine interest in him, getting to know him and sharing with him the wonderful life that God had planned for him. For the first time in his life, Zacchaeus felt accepted. And that led to a third change. And that was a transformation in the way that Zacchaeus acted towards others. He went from being greedy to being generous. Zacchaeus quickly realized that he had been greedy and selfish. And as a result, he had a complete change of heart. He decided that from now on, he wanted to live God's way. Instead of taking from people, he wanted to give to them. Instead of hoarding money for himself, he voluntarily chose to give half of it to the poor and use the other half to pay back the people that he had cheated. Not just the same amount, but four times as much. Jesus didn't tell him that he had to repay his debts, but he knew it was the right thing to do. The law required him to pay back the amount that he had taken unlawfully and to add on an extra 20% as compensation. 
But Zacchaeus went over and above that. He decided not just to add on 20%, but 400%. That would show people that he was genuinely sorry. And he was. When Jesus saw the generosity of Zacchaeus overflowing from a forgiven and thankful heart, he was deeply touched and announced to everyone listening that Zacchaeus was now a true son of Abraham. He was to be accepted and welcomed as part of God's family of faith. His actions had endorsed his words. And so we see here a real transformation in Zacchaeus. He changed from being arrogant to being childlike. He changed from feeling rejected to feeling accepted. He changed from acting selfishly to acting generously. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, For if a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. And that is what happened to Zacchaeus. He became a brand new person. And this story is a beautiful picture of God's work of salvation. Jesus says at the end of the story, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And that's what Jesus was doing in Jericho that day. Zacchaeus thought he was looking for Jesus. And yet the whole time, Jesus was also looking for him, which is why he stopped and called him down from the tree. Jesus, the good shepherd, was looking for his lost sheep. And when he found him and the sheep was willing to come home with him, there was great rejoicing and a wonderful celebration. And so it is with all of us when the Jesus, the good shepherd, finds us. There is great rejoicing in all of heaven. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful story of Zacchaeus, a man who was totally transformed by you in every way. And Lord, thank you that that's the same pattern that happens as you seek the lost sheep of this world, you the good shepherd. Thank you, Lord, how you've looked for us and you found us. And when you found us, there was also great rejoicing in heaven. Oh, Lord, thank you for the wonderful work that you do in the hearts of people. And we pray, Lord, that you'd give us the courage to to also go looking for lost sheep, just as you did, and to help others come to know you, the Saviour of the world. In your precious name we pray. Amen.